Hey, hi, in this video, we will see how to automate Azure DevOps pipeline programmatically. So here uh, we will have a VS code where we're going to build a script, which will actually interact with the Azure DevOps pipeline with using the APIs. So Microsoft Azure DevOps has provided uh, APIs um, and it also keeps on releasing the new APIs. Now in this video, we will see how we can um, invoke the uh, APIs of Azure DevOps pipelines and see you know how we can uh, build that script which will help us to automate the task around the azure devops pipelines so generally in this video i will focus on how to construct the uh, you know the code uh, what are all the syntaxes you need to do uh, what is the you know the uh, what are all the possibilities of the apis that you can do on the azure devops so this is my uh, azure devops repository as you see here so we are in the um, in a project called uh, cloud quick labs adio uh, in that one, I have a repository called Azure Demo Pipeline Automations. So in this one, I have built a pipeline, uh, which is a very simple pipeline. Let me show you this. So this is a pipeline uh, which gets to, which has the trigger points and parameter. Remember that here, you know, we are using the um, DevOps pipeline or basically um, Azure DevOps build uh, uh, pipelines has a parameters which will be used or which will be uh, passed during the invocations. And then down the line we have the you know default runners and it's just an example uh, you know the stage that is built which will which is running a three task one is checking out the code the other one is running a PowerShell script and then doing certain uh, you know the basically echo of the parameters so if I go here and uh, and within the scripts and here we have the PowerShell script so this is a very simple PowerShell script which will count uh, you know from one to twenty basically right now on this repository. Uh, we know that you know we can invoke the pipeline by going to the pipeline here and then uh, you know then here from here you can always uh, try to run the pipeline like this right so this is manually but um, you know as the day passes now you see that automation is everywhere so now how to uh, you know invoke these activities and try to check the status of the pipeline invoke the pipeline with using programmatic that is something you know, i'm going to show you so here to do that you know i have created a dedicated script and this script will be shared in this video's description. You can find it from there and try to use it. So here I have written this particular automation code in the Python, but you can convert into the another any other languages that you want to. So here it uses the request because we are you know interacting with the Azure DevOps pipelines. Uh, it needs the certain parameters. If you see that it has organization names, project name, um, pipeline ID, repo name, branch name, and the pack name. So let me show you how you can get these informations from the Azure DevOps. Uh, if you are an expert, you know that how to get it. But for those people who don't know it, you can uh, try to do something here. So whatever you see in the URL, so the first uh, after um, dev.azure.com, whatever comes after forward slash, that is your organization. And then after that, whatever it comes, that is basically your project. And then the what is that comes after the git, that is your repository. So that is the same value I have copied here. If you see, that is my org name. Uh, this is my project name. And that is where my repo name now uh, and also the branch name of course you know the branch name uh, in the pipeline that is how to get the pipeline ID that is something I will show you so you go to the pipeline here and then uh, you know so then if you click on this one so there is a, a in the URL you see there is something here that is definition ID you can get this programmatically but this is for layman you know so this is where you get the ID of the your, your, your build definition are basically pipeline definition so this is the number so that's the reason i have hard coded that in the in the variables and then the pack token so to get the pack token i think you know what you need to do is you go to the uh, here user settings and from the user setting there is an option called personal access token and uh, here you go right so you can create a new personal access token so basically you need to give the name something like this for example say and then um, you can either um, so there is another option that is uh, you need to scope it to the organization level. So currently I have one org that is Cloud Quick Labs, which is my channel name. And then underneath that, you can do uh, expirations in the sense you can uh, set when this pack token should be expiring. Um, right. So uh, uh, basically now uh, underneath that, we have option for scope in the sense. Um, so what is the access scope that you would like to have here? So that is something, you know, if you have a full access, which means that you know, it gives a full access that your ID has will be inherited on this pack token and if you'd like to go for custom so this is what you can do that you know there are a lot of uh, you know um, that of levels on which you can get the access that is on the work item level code level build level release and test management level packaging level 
right so for that case for now i know i have created a test uh, pat token which has a full access by the way so that is i have uh, created and taken uh, to you know basically i have um, uh, you know copied that pat token and and you know put it here uh, remember that you're gonna have access to that pat token only once or else that is gone you need to create again now in the pipeline let me go back to the pipeline you know so we saw that there were some parameters so if i go back to the again to the uh, to the project uh, to the this is a project uh, we go to the repository this is my azure demo pipeline repository uh, in this pipeline we have a two parameter name uh, with the name like name and the and the build versions right so these are all parameter we need to use while invoking the pipeline so there are two activities i'm going to show you how you can do it programmatically that is triggering the pipeline uh, then the other one is you know checking the status of the pipeline so these are two important tasks that you can do uh, programmatically now uh, with that being said let's go to the next one that is uh, for example say uh, first one uh, we check the uh, first we trigger the pipeline then we check the status of that okay so first one let me comment out this and then i'm going to open the um, so i'm going to uh, unblock these two uh, uh, you know piece of code and uh, and you know what is that it does is it basically triggers the pipeline so what is that it trigger is basically it's a, it's a, a, you know python code if you see here it takes the parameter of branch name repo name and parameter name now this is something you know uh, the next one constructing the url is a you know, very important point because this is a api url so if you see here that is api url starts with dev.azure.com then for slash your org name project name underscore apis then pipeline then you go to give the pipeline id that is we copied above and the runs and after that API version. So what does that mean is it is constructing the API URL with the pipeline ID, right? And then it has a header. This is a header because we are using the uh, application JSON as a header in the payload. So this is basically a syntax that you need to follow. There is no other miss here. So you need to follow as it is. You should have the, uh, I know the payload with the name like resource properties shelf, right? And then you have the reference name and the, and the repository name. And the template parameter this is the template parameters are nothing but the parameters to invoke that pipeline right so to invoke that pipeline let me show you um, so if i go back to the pipeline uh, right so when we, when we go to the pipeline manually here uh, when we click on run pipeline so here you go right so when i'm choosing the uh, only one branch that i have it is asking me to pass the parameters that is environment build version okay so this is something you know i can run it manually but for automation, you need to do it programmatically. That is where you know I'm, I'm trying to show you here. Whatever you did right now manually, so let's do that programmatically. So this is how you know we were trying to uh, help you to understand how to do that. So this is your payload, and then finally uh, you are invoking the uh, web request, basically a request, and that one you are using the post method. You have a URL. Uh, all these are nothing but you know syntax that you need to follow. This is where it invokes the API, and then down the line we are capturing the response. So whether did we get a required response? That is 200 or 201 or did we get something else which means it is failed for some reason right so here you go i have clicked it manually it got triggered now let's do it programmatically all right so i'm gonna run this uh, pipeline programmatically so if you see here i'm just invoking or basically running this python script and see if it gets invoked here you go so what i got is i got a run id equal to 25 which means that you know we should see the pipeline running here so if I refresh it, uh, we should we should have one more pipeline running. So this is what I wanted to show, right? So I didn't do any manually. We did trigger manually. We did trigger it with using the APIs. It got triggered. The build ID is equal to 25 and you see that the job is running. So job is basically it contains a certain task. If you see here, it is running a Python uh, PowerShell script uh, and it is doing certain checkout uh, a PowerShell script and, and then, you know, final uh, wrap up tasks. Right, so you see that we did that basically in the sense, you know, we were able to trigger the pipeline with using code. And this piece of code you can integrate in your automation workflow or somewhere wherever you want to achieve the end-to-end -end automations. Now, let me, let's go back to the another task that is how to view the status of that particular build, right? Now, we got the build ID that is 25. Let me uh, call the another function called check pipeline status by uncommenting the another function here. So what is that I'm expecting is, you know, let this function to run and uh, try to get me the status of the pipeline. So what did we see here? We see that the pipeline went green, which means it is succeeded. Let's see what does this code does. Okay. So here we are passing the run ID and the API is getting constructed something like this. That is, we have a base FQDN that is dev.azure.com, organization name, project name, pipeline ID and the forward slash runs and run ID. And then the API version, which is sound.1, which is latest as of now 
uh, right and then um, then we have a request that is invoking that particular api and collecting the response if it is getting a 200 then going inside the response and you know grabbing the status something like this now let me uh, try to run it and we'll see you know how does uh, uh, it, it talks about 25 so it says that status is equal to completed and the result is equal to succeeded which means you know which is as expected all right so with that note you know i have uh, shown you the things need to be shown in this video that is how to automate uh, azure devops pipeline programmatically all right so with that note uh, you know thank you very much for watching my videos kind request please do subscribe my channel that would uh, really encourage me a lot with that note thank you thanks a lot and see you in the next video